If you need a multi-port PoE Plus switch that integrates easily with your current infrastructure and gives you local control with on-screen management, then stick around to learn about our new GPOES 24-2 55-volt 390 watt PoE switch. The GPOES 24-2 is a gigabit 24 port rack mountable PoE switch with an LCD display and is designed for security cameras and building infrastructure. It has the ability to manage switch mode, bandwidth, port capability, and even includes a watchdog feature. Let's take a look. This is the GPOES 24-2 55V390W PoE switch. It's a 24 port rack mountable PoE switch with an LCD display for on-screen management. It has an internal power supply that provides 55 volts, 390 watts, with a fuse limit of 600 milliamps per port. Each port also has its own LED indicator and supports pass-through data rate up to gigabit speeds. There is an LCD screen for local display management and two SFP ports, which I'll review shortly. Here you can see the two G1000 Base X SFP ports. Let's power it on. On the LCD screen, you'll see an option for each of the PoE ports. The home screen will tell you the maximum power available on the entire switch, the current output power of the switch, the number of power devices connected, and the switch configuration mode, which right now is set to normal. The third column you see with the letter M indicates the entering data rate. That fourth column is for the exiting data rate from the device. Now we can review each function starting with switch mode. Switch mode allows you to control how the switching function operates. The options are NORM, VLAN, and CCTV. VLAN is a more secure option so that the ports cannot talk to each other, and CCTV combines the VLAN function with extra long data and power transmission. The switch bandwidth option allows you to limit how much of the switch's bandwidth a particular port can use. PD type gives you control to override the power to device negotiation. Standard type means that your devices will negotiate the type of PoE and classification. Enhance means that regardless of the device negotiation, it will allow the port to deliver up to AT power and the settings you put in the PSE port. Legacy isn't used very often, but it allows the switch to negotiate with the capacitance tag power to device. Next we have the PD Alive function, also known as Watchdog. This function lets you set up an automatic reboot function for a specific port. For example, say you have a security camera on port number one and it stops communicating for whatever reason. This feature allows the PoE switch to take over and reboot the port to see if the device will come back on. Our next menu option is PSE port priority. This will set the priority for which ports will pull more power in the instance that the power budget of every port exceeds the total power budget at any time. The PSE port enable function gives you the control to turn on and off the power on any port. PSE port power lets you adjust whether or not a port can run at a higher power than the traditional standard. The LCD on or off options are pretty straightforward. You can control how long the LCD screen will remain active after the last use. Menu item number 9 is for fan control. This allows you to control when the cooling fans will turn on. It's based on the percentage of power budget used at that time. The last options we have are language, you can choose between English and Chinese, default setting which will help restore your system, password setting to help adjust your password, and about which will help give you diagnostic information about the model and software. As an easy indicator to show the auto negotiation from the switch, we'll use a simulate PoE device mode on our Gen 2 tester. Once the tester is recognized as a compatible PoE device, you'll notice that the LED for port number 1 turns on and the screen displays that one powered device is connected, drawing 0.6 watts. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the PSE port enable function works in real time. The tester is currently connected to port number 2. The LED indicator is confirming that power is available. We're also getting a voltage reading on the tester screen. 
you'll see that once we disable the power on port number two, the tester is no longer giving a reading and the LED light for port number two turns off. Power is no longer available on the port. Then once we flip back to enable, the reading comes back up and the port is active. That does it for today everyone, but thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload. Interested in other types of videos instead? Leave us a comment on what you'd rather see. Check out our other channels too. We post regularly to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and now Reddit. So check out the Pee Wee Connect thread and join the conversation. See you all next time.